This video will help students be prepared to write their Chemistry 30 diploma exam. I'm pulling uh, key information from the information bulletin uh, provided by Alberta Ed for Chem 30 for the 2023-2024 year. Uh, and there's little to nothing that has changed uh, that I'm gonna highlight in this bulletin compared to other years. So this document is intended for teachers, but I'm just pulling out the select parts that would be of interest to students. So in preparing to write the diploma exam, you have to realize there's two distinctive categories of questions. So you have what's often referred to as higher mental activity or, or questions that use, analyze, evaluate, create type skills. And that helps put students in uh, a standard of excellence category. And about 25% of the questions on the exam will be uh, requiring um, those type of descriptors. The rest of the questions will be acceptable standard where you're applying your knowledge. Now what I really want to highlight is that there will not be any straight memorized type questions. So you're not, do not memorize what the definition of anode or cathode uh, would be. It's something you're going to be asked to apply uh, that knowledge and identifying stuff. So don't use any of those um, memorizing skill. So really don't focus on the yellow at the bottom, which is uh, remember and understand. Those are building block skills uh, that you need to have in order to apply your knowledge. The um, breakdown of the diploma um, from thermo, uh, Thermochem. Um, so the bulletin says there's about 20 to 22 percent of the questions from that unit. So that's going to work out to be about 12 questions. Uh, this part uh, the question section is done by me and is not part of the bulletin. And that's why I'm using the word about. Electrochem, uh, electrochemical changes or redox will be about 18 questions on the diploma, organic about 12, and equilibrium about 18. Now some questions can fall into multiple categories. You could have an organic um, chemical, maybe a carboxylic acid, and they ask you for the oxidation state of the carbon in that. So it's not always, um, straightforward exactly um, to put a question in just one category. But this certainly should affect your studying. Uh, redox should certainly be uh, quite important. And then probably thermo, even though it's not weighted as much, it's, it's certainly one of the uh, units that requires more effort. Uh, equilibrium is hopefully a unit that you will do well on and it's 18%. Um, uh, organic is something you'll probably put less time studying in. It's a simpler unit and just uh, has much less worth, about 20% of your diploma exam. So the, that previously was the breakdown for the general outcomes. They will test uh, skills also, and occasionally uh, a few STS skills. It isn't worth studying any of the labs that you did. There are no labs that are mandatory, but the skills that you've developed are important. Um, the only other thing you may want to make sure you're aware of is some of the glassware needed for something like titrations. There have been questions about glassware questions, um, uh, about equipment, but um, it's not a guarantee to be on the diploma, but you, you certainly would want to be comfortable with um, lab equipment and hopefully you've developed the skills. Again, don't go back and study the labs that your particular teacher did. There, you know, no lab is, is mandatory. You certainly want to be aware of things like um, variables, again, glassware, um, and certainly design processes. Now, I sort of talked about there being 12 or 18 questions from each unit. Um, that added up to a total of 60 questions, and the breakdown is going to be 44 are going to be multiple choice, and 16 are numeric uh, response this year, and this is how it's been for, for many, many years now. Um, just going through the instruction page on the front of your exam, um, so you don't have any surprises reading this, the diploma is a three hour exam. Like if you think, oh, you've got six hours to do it, and, and that is true, but it is not a longer exam with the extra time. Uh, it is doable in three hours and quite doable in you know about three hours and 30 minutes. So that would be my uh, target suggestion for you in writing the exam already talked about the 44 and the 16 questions. You will get a nice clean uh, chemistry data booklet, that orange booklet that you might have been given from your teacher. 
you are told that you can tear out, uh, or you do need to tear out the last uh, uh, page or the uh, mesquite machine scoring uh, page. I would do that right away and I would be bubbling things in uh, as you go. Some students like to do it at the end. Um, that is more easily done with the double time. When you didn't have double time, I'd really encourage students to fill in as you go so you're not panicking at the end. Um, but anyway, I would suggest filling it in as you go or if you wanted to wait. There is some scrap paper at the back. You don't necessarily need this. You should be able to do a lot of your work right on the exam as you go. If you're somebody who likes to, to write a lot, you could tear it out, but I would just plan to, to write your answers right on top of the exam. Maybe you're used to having tests that your teacher didn't let you write on, but that's not the case here. Um, so be underlining stuff, bolding things, maybe bring in some highlighters uh, to the diploma exam. You definitely want to have an HB pencil for filling out that answer sheet. You are only allowed one approved calculator, and I'll talk about the ones that are allowed uh, shortly. Uh, you need to have your calculator cleared going into and, and leaving the exam. Hopefully your supervisor will, will clear it both times. Uh, don't worry about re reminding them if, if they don't clear it on the way out, but don't be surprised if you hand your calculator to a supervisor and they clear uh, the memory so you don't have anything stored in, stored in it. All the science exams you're allowed, or at least chemistry and physics, you're allowed a ruler and protractor, but there's no reason to bring them in. There's no graphing section in chemistry, and you certainly don't need a protractor. I'm just mentioning this. You're not surprised when you see it on the exam, and like, why didn't somebody tell you to bring it? Um, you know, I don't, I don't tell my students to, to bring uh, any of those things. There's some comments about leading to significant digits, but you really don't need to worry about these. I don't like it, but the diploma tells you exactly how many digits to put in your numeric response. So you are told to consider all numbers in the exam to be a part of measurement or observation. And in theory, you do sig figs, but really don't do sig figs. The question tells you, tells you to report your answer to, to with three digits, then, then just follow and do three digits, whether it's 12.3 or 1.47, that's, that's three digits either way. Uh, just exact, I'm um, talking about the um, scoring and then the calculator, no need to talk about multiple choice. You may or may not have done many numeric response answering, so it's worth going through some of the exemplars that Albert Ed's provided uh, for us in the bulletin. Uh, you do want to start keying from the far left, so you may use all the boxes, but you may not. So in this case, you have to answer uh, 23.7, so you're going to start on the far left regardless of what you have to enter, and just make sure you realize that the decimal takes up its own column. So don't go to three and then key the decimal in under the three. It takes up a space. You can only key in uh, either four numbers or three numbers if there's a decimal place. Uh, you may have to key in uh, digits to select certain items and the order may or may not matter. So sometimes there is more than one uh, correct answer um, that you can key in. Uh, if you're not keying in uh, all the boxes, make sure you start in the far left. And in this example where you're keying in three, four, five, there would be a, a blank box and don't worry about that and, and don't key in a zero or, or something. There is no blank to be keyed in. It is very likely you'll have to key in scientific notation uh, at some point in the exam. Not always, but it's um, certainly something that might come up in redox. Uh, and whenever you're asked to key in scientific notation, you'll you only be putting in sort of the, the base uh, or the, the number in front of the base and the exponent. So you'll, you'll never be keying in the times 10 to the power of. It's just not a format that Alberta Ed does. Um, so in 9.65 times 10 to the power of 4, you'd just be keying in the 9, the 6, the 5, and the 4. Um, you typically would not be keying in, in the decimal place. Okay. They're telling you uh, in their format to do a.bc times 10 to the d, where you're just doing the a, the b, the c, and the d. So um, just realize it, it might be a little confusing. You might think you have to key in the decimal, but uh, you don't. Uh, with scientific notation. 
Um, one, qua one format you might get, particularly in electrochem, is sort of a choose your own adventure. And this is often happens in lab type questions where you might have to key, pick a, an experiment first and then what would happen with that experiment or an indicator and what color you'd get. Um, where you have to sort of follow a, a path through answers, which would lead to multiple correct answers. Um, this can happen in electrochem where you need to pick the direction of electrons in an electrolytic cell and it doesn't matter what direction you pick uh, but then that sets the anode and the cathode and the electron flow so just don't be to confused by a question where you're like oh there's multiple ways i can answer this Th that may be the case and they'll often tell you as i've underlined in red there may be more than one correct answer when you see that it's just meant to, to give you that peace of mind when you see multiple ways just don't try to solve it multiple ways. Find a one crack pathway and just move on. Um, you will get um, a Chem30 data booklet, as previously mentioned. It's got an orange cover and it, it's quite old. It's the one around from uh, 2020. So if you've been using sort of an orange uh, data booklet, you'll be getting a very similar one. As for the uh, calculators that you're allowed to use, uh, I grabbed this right from the Alberta Ed's uh, website from June of 2024. Um, so you're only allowed one and the calculators that they say that you're allowed are listed here. I'm not gonna read them all off. I find most students have the TI-83 or 84 or some sort of plus or silver variant of those. Uh, and you can pause the video and scan the list if you want to, uh, if you, if you have one of these other calculators and, and want to see if it's here. Uh, Albert Ed posts a few calculators that are not allowed and they're largely Casios. I don't see students with these so I don't think it's a big concern but maybe you're out of school that emphasizes uh, one of these so you would have to find a different scientific calculator. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a heads up on what to expect when you go into the diploma and if you want to learn more about the exact outcomes and, and a bit of diploma prep, please check out um, my other videos.